Happy International Women's Day, St. Lucia. This International Women's Day, and indeed the entire month of March, presents an opportunity to reflect on women in the past and present context and consider the women of the future. This year, the theme chosen in observance of the day is Digit All, Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. It is a fitting theme given how innovation and technology have had an even greater influence on almost all aspects of life since the pandemic era. The reason I'm not celebrating the activities of this week with you in person is because I am attending the 67th session on the status of women at the United Nations in New York, where I will be interfacing with gender affairs ministers, development partners, and civil society groups from all over the world as we deliberate on the theme, Innovation and Technological Change, and Education in the Digital Age for Achieving Gender Equality and the Empowerment of All Women and Girls. I am honored to be representing you and advocating on your behalf at this forum. Access to and use of technology by everyone can help accelerate women's empowerment post-pandemic to make up for the setbacks created by COVID-19 pandemic. St. Lucia has made great strides in that regard in the education sector through programs that benefit both boys and girls. Initiatives such as digital education capacity strengthening, iLearning developer, smart classroom, one laptop per child, connect ed, coding and robotics boot camps for children, regional girls team symposium, the St. Lucia Education Innovative Lab, and others should provide the assurance that at least in the education sector, digital technology is a priority for all. Development partners such as the World Bank and the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, as well as corporate St. Lucia, such as the CEL and others, must be commended for their support in funding some of these initiatives. Partnership still remains an imperative for national development, including for gender equality and the advancement of women. Technology and innovation do not end in the education sector. I am pleased with the introduction of DigiGov that makes transacting business with the various departments and agencies of government easier. The impact of this innovative use of technology to serve the public is an advantage for women who tend to be busy. DigiGov grants easy access to services virtually. The innovations that have emerged from climate smart agricultural practices, for instance, and the emphasis on such opportunities for women are noteworthy strides. Innovative financing is the next level that our smallholders and women in the agriculture sector will benefit from in the coming months. Only two weeks ago, we ended the celebration of 44 years of independence as a nation that focused on coming together as one people. In a similar fashion, during the month where we celebrate women, it is an opportunity for us to see ourselves as one people. What one does affects us all, whether good or bad. Seen in that light, International Women's Day is not just about women. Women's issues are development issues, and development issues concern everyone. I am therefore calling upon all to join in this year's commemoration 
to lobby for the advancement of everyone in technology and innovation, both in terms of access to the technology and the skills to use it effectively. Technology and innovation remove the, the barrier of physical strength that has often been blamed for the non-participation of women in certain fields. Technology has created the opportunity to break down these barriers and allow women and men to work side by side. Use the month to honor women who have excelled, women who are not giving up, women who are carrying the burden of families and communities. Let us take the opportunity that this month affords us to say thank you to our women leaders in government, the private sector, and in civil society. On Friday, we hosted a forum on women in politics at the House of Parliament in collaboration with the Inter-American Commission on the Status of Women. As today is the first anniversary of the passage of the Historic Domestic Violence Act, I want to validate the regional and international recognition given to St. Lucia for the passage of this piece of legislation. Since the passage, there has been some police training, the development of guides for the use of the act, and sensitization of some communities and civil society organizations. It is a work in progress. During this year, we will intensify public sensitization around the act. On March 7th, UNICEF and PCI Media, through regional spotlight initiatives, launched a media package for a gender-based violence awareness campaign, which will assist the Department of Gender Affairs, other agencies of government and civil society organizations in their sensitization efforts around gender-based violence and the Domestic Violence Act. In closing, I would like to reiterate the government of St. Lucia's commitment to gender equality, the advancement of women as a national development goal, and encourage all to participate in the observance of International Women's Day. I commend the civil society organizations for their continued strides in the advancement of women and girls. I applaud the newly identified gender focal points, who you will be hearing much about in the coming months from the various departments, ministries, and agencies of government, and encourage you to make the best of this opportunity to ensure that national development benefits us all equally. To all women, happy International Women's Day. You deserve to be celebrated every day. But today, as the emphasis worldwide is on you, do shine. God bless you and do have a wonderful observance.